What you're about to see is a remote viewing session in which the target is President Xi Jinping of China. There are two focuses and they are different points in time. The first is November 2023 and the second focus is December 2023. So we're interested to see if there's any change in his feelings over a period of time. Now, there are two concerns in this target as well. The first concern is the relationship between the two wars in Ukraine and the Middle East and the possibility of using military force to capture Taiwan. And the second concern is simply the possibility of waiting instead of using military force to capture Taiwan. So we're interested to see if there's been any change in President Xi Jinping's thinking with regard to the use of military force in respect to what's going on in the world elsewhere, such as the wars in Ukraine and the Middle East. Now, the remote viewer does not know what the target is. So when you see the remote viewer describing the data, the remote viewer will not know what you now know. But after the remote viewer has described the data completely, then the remote viewer will be told and the target reveal what the target actually was. And then you get to see the response or the reaction from the remote viewer of knowing what the target actually is, plus the discussion is interesting. So let's go right now to the actual remote viewer and hear what the remote viewer found with respect to this target. Hi everybody, here we are starting deep news and we have Antisum here. Um, just to clarify before we get started, Intisum, you do not know the nature of this target? I don't. All no. right, fantastic. So let's go and move on to your session. What were your initial perceptions as you started off here on page four? So it felt like a uh, city, urban environment, um, many subjects around, uh, slightly irregular topography, but the hills, I could feel them kind of in the distance. The structures seemed quite tall, so I deducted a high rise and um, few, quite a few non-surface structures above said that the non-surface structure were emitting energetics, but it felt to me like engine energetics, but I'm not sure. It's, it is a deduction. The light looks quite dim, and it was kind of loud, somewhat loud. All cold right. temperatures also, by the way. Oh, cold, cooler temperatures? Yep. Okay, very cool, very cool. All right. So very interesting. Um, so moving on, it seems that you uh, moved on to focus one and you started perceiving a target subject. Um, what, what can you tell us about that? OK, so this target subject, uh, male, light skin tone and dark clothing, I deducted like a military type uniform. It felt like the subject had a belly, you know, kind of protruding belly, dark shoes, pants and jacket, very neat. Um, middle-aged to maybe a little slightly older and a thick neck <laughs> what's up with that I don't know I've never <laughs> said that before in a session thick neck um, yeah semi-formal uniform like like attire yep so then obviously there's a sketch of the subject all right very interesting okay very cool so uh, then you moved on to a deep mind probe so what was that like when you got into the mind of the subject the first thing to pop out was it felt like this was somebody who's um, sort of materialistic or somebody who enjoys the nicer things in life. Um, if uh, He also felt like a tricky or maybe like a dodgy personality, clever in his dealings, and he does t try to come out on top. So when he makes these deals, he kind of wants to come out on top of them, right? Um, he also felt quite greedy and also that it's his job to make deals. So with this, I was deducting a lobbyist, congressman. Um, it felt like he has a good knowledge of the law and government dealings and how to take advantage of it, which is why I kind of have these deductions as well. Um, not an empathetic person in the sense of like not caring who or what gets hurt or is damaged by his actions. So that's why I thought he wasn't empathetic. And besides his humor, people don't like him. His humor feels kind of dark, like a dark sense of humor. And the part about people don't like him, he knows this. <laughs> I got this as like, he knows, you know, people don't like him. Um, he also felt like slimy, like a slimy personality and more of a political person than a business person, I would say. 
Wow, fascinating. Okay, so uh, I know you kept on going with this deep mind probe, and you started looking into concern one specifically. So, mm -hmm. what happened there? So, concern one is something subject A is aware of. He is trying to tread carefully around the matter, trying to handle concern one, but in a manipulative manner to benefit himself. Um, it felt like not a. It's not a heavy-handed manipulation but in a soft way that wouldn't get noticed. Uh, concern one is ultimately an inconvenience to subject A, but he feels like he could use it to his advantage, like he does with most things. And he's in a position to make his first move before other factors come into play. So he knows things before everyone does, which all, it gives him an advantage for sure. Um, this subject feels disdain for a group of subjects and he's looking down on them. And I, w I could sense some negative emotions like hate, seething about something tied to his concern. And then I deducted Zelensky. Okay, interesting, fascinating. All right, so uh, moving on, you continued with this Focus One Deep Mind probe uh, going on to Concern Two now. So, what happened when you started probing in with respect to Concern Two? Okay, so this Focus One Concern Two. Mm. Uh, subject feels quite happy and optimistic about concern too, like it's Christmas morning. Um, I'm not saying it's Christmas morning, I'm saying it feels like Christmas morning. And it feels like something that's happened that's leading him to scoring big time. And he's eager to share the news with his compadres. A feeling of he's won and others have lost was coming through, like um, he, he's feeling victorious over something. I also got the feeling that something had been work. He had been working on something for a long time. Like he had this grand plan, right? And he was feeling overwhelming positive emotions. Like this guy's really happy about something. And whatever this was, was a gamble that seemed to pay off. And he's winning, others are losing. A weird deduction is Jabba the Hutt. I don't know why, but it's these these like. Interesting. <laughs> I guess him him winning, others losing, kind of feels like Jabba the Hutt to me. I see, I see. Well, that's fascinating as well. So let's move on now. We're going to look at these concerns once again, but in focus two now. So okay. focus you were two. going then to concern one once more, but this time at focus two. So what happened then? So, concern one, focus two, to me, feels like subject A is raking his mind over an issue. Uh, concern, concern one feels like a disturbance to him. It feels like he, he's worrisome, he's stressed out, um, to the point where the stress is making him kind of ill. Um, and concern one is a huge loss of resources and money to him. It feels like subject A has a lot of resources, but again, it feels like he's greedy, so this loss is making him sick, and he can't stand to lose anything. It feels like he made a mistake or was overconfident in his dealings. Wow, that's an interesting turn. So uh, let's look now at concern two for focus one. Okay, so for this concern two, the subject feels like he's... Um, oh, focus two, I apologize. Focus two, concern two, focus two. Concern two, focus two, yes. Uh, subject feels like he's down in the gutters, very depressed emotions, getting the visuals of him crying. Uh, in his mind, he feels like he's losing everything, his wealth, his reputation, etc. Subject A blames a group of subjects for his downfall. And it feels, it feels like he was being really dramatic to me. Um, concern one feels worse than concern two. And concern two feels like a letdown after having huge expectations. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So okay, because uh, it doesn't make sense to me because okay. I don't know what these concerns are. Um, but yeah, concern one it feels like concern two, but concern two feels like a letdown of expectations. Hmm. Um, he he's not used to losing. That's quite clear. And despite the dump, subject A is plotting a comeback. Um, he has a group of people he's close to, and this concern seems to have affected all of them. So he's not alone in this concern. Wow. All right. So I, I, I see uh, you have a deduction on the last page. you want to read that out before we go to the target reveal? 
My deduction is the Star Wars Sith plan to take over the Galactic Senate because of Subject A and company plotting to accrue power and resources. All right. So, so they, feel, they feel like a bunch of Siths to me. <laughs> I see. All right. So that's a really fascinating remote viewing session. So let me go ahead and just jump right into the target. Uh, the target reveal, and once again, just clarifying, Antisum, you do not know the target, correct? I have no idea. All right. So completely blind to the target, let me just say out the target uh, title for this project. It is Xi Jinping and Taiwan. So Xi Jinping, president of China and Taiwan. Mm. So that was pretty much the whole uh, focus of this target, which is really fascinating because one of the, your last deduction the Star Wars Sith plan to take over the Galactic Senate. And that's a that's pretty fascinating deduction because that whole uh, story is, you know, while, while being a bit more grandiose than I imagine our, our Earth experience would be, is a political power grab. And yep. that is literally what we're investigating, a political power grab over the country of Taiwan uh, by Xi Jinping. So it's uh, basically... Um, Looking at focus one, that was Xi Jinping this month in November 2023. Uh, that's when we're recording this. Not sure when you guys are going to see this live uh, on on uh, YouTube, but um, that is the point of the target right now. November 2023, Xi Jinping and when he is thinking about the possible use of military force to capture Taiwan. The concerns are basically concern number one being the relationship between the two wars, both in Ukraine and the Middle East, and the possibility of using military force to capture Taiwan within those contexts. Mm. And concern two, that is the possibility of waiting to use military force to capture Taiwan. So playing the long game there. And it seemed that in your session, as well as in everybody else's that I've seen, the idea of sort of joining the group of wars that are going on and, and sort of pushing forward with a more aggressive stance when it comes to the Taiwan issue uh, is not something that Xi Jinping wants to do. That is something that is objectively a worse option in his mind, but he doesn't seem to be having the easiest time with the possibility of waiting with uh, mm -hmm. concern to taking the long game, especially when moving into focus two which focus two is next month, December 2023, when he is thinking of the possibility of using force, military force to capture Taiwan, which is uh, fascinating because you said basically that he was a lot more positive about the playing the long game, waiting uh, as of this month in November. And next month in December, he feels quite let down by that uh, stance, even though that stance is objectively better than the aggressive gun ho military stance. So that is it. That is the target that you were investigating. Okay. Um, I guess a lot of things make sense now. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, definitely a very interesting session. And your description was pretty fascinating. You had a lot of, uh, when you were describing the target, President Xi, uh, you deducted lobbyists, congressmen, you deducted political things. So you clearly mm. were doing accurate remote viewing, picking up on a political person from a completely blind state. Uh, you picked up uh, that this is a political guy mm. uh, dressed in, he had uh, neat attire and uh, lighter skin, darker hair. And basically, uh, you just went into his mind and found out a lot of really interesting stuff. So... Yeah, hmm. fascinating, fascinating session all around. I'm not sure what to say as of yet, because I'm still looking. You know, you do these things and you're blind. <laughs> and and then once you know, you kind of like have to re-review <laughs> everything to be like, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jabba the Hutt, huh? <laughs> yeah, you, you said Jabba the Hutt, but you also <laughs> said that he had a thicker neck. He does have a thicker neck and does a bit he? of a belly. So, you know, you're not wrong with those appearance descriptions. Oh interesting <laughs> yeah he does not like to lose does not like to lose and and i will point out uh a really fascinating thing about your focus two uh concept of uh looking at the various concerns you really had stuff dealing with him worrying about losing more resources and money and the idea of entering into a hot conflict was something that seemed to jeopardize the idea of losing 
right. a great amount right. of resources and money that he had accrued. And that's, that's very interesting. It seems to make a lot of sense. I mean, he's coming at this Taiwan issue with a bit of a different flavor than what I guess us in America are used to when we think of our yeah. own military industrial complex. That he has a different perspective on the Taiwan issue. So it's a very interesting, very mm. interesting session. And uh, I would say it's probably quite accurate. It matches with a lot of other people who touch this target. And um, it, it's, it, I, I wonder if it also, now this is just speculation. I wonder if it also sheds any light on this hopefulness uh, that he had. Uh, President Xi was just recently, a couple of days before recording this, uh, in the United States, he was in San Francisco. And I don't know what they were talking about specifically. I'm not sure that us relying on the mainstream media will get the full story of anything that happens between uh, world leaders behind closed doors. So I do wonder if this is uh, partly going to be related to some of the optimism that he seems to have this month in November and how that optimism turns into feeling let down, feeling like he needs a comeback right. next month. So I, I'm... I'm curious for what happens, and regardless of what happens, I'm wondering if the mainstream media will report anything to us as we're on the outside of these sort of things. Well, we'll I guess we'll get the sources one way or another, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that was cool. I got scary, <laughs> but yeah. interesting. Very interesting. All right, and fantastic remote viewing. Very accurate stuff of what we Thank can verify. You. It's great. Awesome. All right. So any last questions or comments? No, no, I'm still processing again. I, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to process now that I know what the target is. Totally understandable. All right. Well, thank you very much, Itisam, and thanks everybody else for watching.